Hey guys, if you just joined us, um, we got a new update on Stillwater Coronavirus. It's mandatory to wear a face mask. If not, it's a $500 fine. Um, you can go anywhere in town, make sure you have a face mask with you. Uh, you cannot enter any stores without a face mask. So that, uh, relatives, you know, give me a heads up on that. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention today. Uh, we're going to continue um, watching the and monitoring the current um, news uh, news and stuff, media, to keep you informed what's going on around Oklahoma and Stillwater. Um, Payne County is 44 and I think one death so far. 44 confirmed and one death is the number of Stillwater, Payne County on that. Okay, I'm going to keep you informed one, two, doing some severe weather. Uh, we got a new system we'll be doing. So, um, pretty much what I'm going to do is going to check on a couple of things. And contained hey at the um, original location, and I think it could have been contained place. relatively easily. Yes. China is a very sophisticated country, and they could have contained it. They were either unable to or they chose not to, and the world has suffered greatly. Well, China doesn't want to see me elected, and uh, the reason is that uh, we're getting billions and billions of dollars, many billions of dollars a month from China. China never gave our country anything. China gave us nothing, not 10 cents. And whether it was uh, Biden in charge of China, which was a joke, because he ripped off, they ripped off our country for eight years. And uh, in all fairness to uh, Biden and Obama, this went on long before they got into office. I mean, you can go through many administrations until I came along, uh, and then we signed a trade deal where they're supposed to buy, and they've been buying a lot, actually, but uh, that now becomes secondary to what took place with the virus. The virus situation is just uh, not acceptable. They intentionally let it spread to Well, they could have done it, and, and I'm just saying, well, one of two things happened. They, they either didn't do it, and, you know, they couldn't do it from a competent standpoint, or they let it spread. We're looking at exactly where it came from, who it came from, how it happened, separately and also scientifically. So we're going to be able to find it. And my question is, have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And what gives you a high degree of confidence that this originated from the Wuhan Institute of Virology? I can't tell you. It was a total discredit. And more information came out today. What they tried to do to destroy him and to hurt this presidency was uh, Perhaps in our country's history, there's never been anything like it. An absolute disgrace. Uh, but I'll uh, rely on what the Vice President said. I can say this, uh, and I think you understand this, John, very well. What happened to General Flynn should never happen again to a citizen of this country. Yes, please. You said that Michael Flynn would come back uh, even bigger and better. So are you going to pardon him? And if so, are you considering to bring him back into your administration? Well, it looks to me like uh, Michael Flynn would be exonerated based on everything I see. Look, I'm not the judge, but I have a different type of power. Uh, but uh, I don't know that anybody would have to use that power. I think he's exonerated everything. I've never seen anything like it. What they did, what they wrote, you see this, General. You wouldn't want this happening to you, what they did to General Flynn. And uh, it's just uh, disgraceful. So, you know, I guess we'll get to that maybe someday or maybe not. Hopefully, we won't have to get there bring him back into your administration? Well, I think he's a fine man. I think it's terrible what they did to him. It's something that nobody's asked me, but uh, you're asking me for the first time. I would certainly consider it. Yeah, I would. I think he's, I think he's a fine man. I think he's got a great family. He loves his son. I will tell you, his son was around a lot, and he loves his son, and as people generally do. And uh, they did everything possible to destroy him. And he's still breathing very strongly, but they really hurt him very badly. Very, very unfair. Kristen? A quick follow. Uh, in what capacity? I do have a coronavirus related question, but in what capacity would you bring him back? If well, we'd look. I mean, I'm not even, this is really the first time I've been asked the question, but I think he'll be fully exonerated one way or the other. And so certainly he'd be capable of coming back. He suffered greatly. You about comments by your son-in-law. One of your top advisors, Jared Kushner, yesterday said that the government's response has been a, quote, 
great success story. Is that the Could right you, tone? Uh, lift that up a little bit? Yeah, no problem. Your son-in-law, one of your top advisors, yes, Jared yeah. Kushner, yesterday said the government's response has been a, quote, great success story. Is that the right tone and message well, it's just at a moment saying when the facts. people are I mean, still he's dying? not talking about uh, uh, other things that I talk about in my speech today that I speak about all the time, and that's death. Uh, it's horrible that what this country has gone through and what the world has gone through, frankly. This is something that could have been contained at the original location, and I think it could have been contained relatively easily. Uh, China is a very sophisticated country, and they could have contained it. They were either unable to or they chose not to, and the world has suffered greatly. But what Jared was talking about and what I talk about a lot is, no, I don't think anybody's done the job that we've done uh, other than uh, at public relations, because the press just won't uh, talk about the facts. We had a, uh, a ventilator problem that was caused by the fact that we weren't left ventilators by a previous administration. The cupboards were bare, as I say often. And uh, not only are the cupboards full now, we have ventilators. We're the king in the world of ventilators. We have thousands and thousands of them now being delivered. You were at the news conferences over the last few days. The governors never, they said, we've never had a case where we couldn't get a ventilator. And at the, a month and a half ago, people, you, were screaming, ventilator, ventilator. Uh, I'm just looking at the test numbers. We have more tests. We have given more tests and the high quality tests than every other country combined. And uh, I say it, uh, the friend of mine, South Korea President Moon, called me. You know, they talk about South Korea, and they've done a really good job. But he said, what a job you've done. This is a much bigger country, you understand. He said, what a job you've done on, uh, on testing. So the testing and the masks and all of the things, we've solved every problem. We solved it quickly. But to think that now we're giving thousands of ventilators to other countries, allies and other than allies, to be honest, but we're helping other countries where people are dying uh, because we have ventilators and nobody else does to this extent. And it's a great tribute. I mean, Deborah, we were talking about that before. Deborah Burks, Dr. Burks has been fantastic. She's a fantastic person, a fantastic woman. And uh, we talk about the things that we've done in a short period of time. I mean. All you heard about was ventilators. That's a hard thing. We uh, energized factories that didn't build ventilators. They were building cars and other things, and now we're building thousands a week. And it's been uh, very spectacular. It's been really spectacular. So, yeah, I think uh, — I don't think anybody's done a better job with testing, with ventilators, with all of the things that we've done. And our, our uh, death totals, our numbers per million people, are really uh, very, very strong. We're, we're very proud of the job we've done. We had very little to work with because the previous administration left us very little. Uh, Quick follow, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. President. Go ahead. Why don't you go and then you go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. You signed that executive order this morning dealing with the uh, counter narcotics operations that you have going on in the Western Hemisphere right now. Why the need for ma more manpower? And do you think your government is any closer to the goal of having the Western Europe leave office? Well, I need it and I sign it. And we do have executive orders and they help us a lot. And they've helped us a very lot here. Uh, we also uh, sign things having to do with production. As you know, I've used that very, very powerfully, the Act. Uh, and uh, oftentimes, I didn't have to use it. I just had to talk about it. No, I'm only signing when we want something, when we want uh, — when we need additional manpower or brain power or whatever it is we're looking for at the time. But uh, we, again, we've done things that uh, — I don't think anybody else has been able to do what we've done. And this is a big country, too. This is a very big country, as you know. And I'm very proud of the country. I'm very proud of the way they, uh, they've they stepped up. Now, things are opening. Uh, as an example, Governor Lee is doing a great job in opening up Tennessee, and he's opening it up rapidly and safely. I think he, he said to me two words, I think, about safe and rapid. And I think safe was the first one you mentioned, in all fairness, but it was safe and rapid. He's doing it uh, quickly and safely, and uh, Tennessee's a great story. But we have uh, other governors, friends of both of ours, that are doing really a good job. Uh, I will say this, Governor Murphy and Governor Cuomo have a, a tougher situation because that's really a hotbed. That's a, uh, it's a very, very dense area. People don't realize. I think New Jersey, believe it or not, is the single most dense area in the country. Who would think that? 
But uh, the governor's done a, a terrific job, and Governor Cuomo, likewise, is working very, very hard and speaking to me all the time. And whenever we can help him, we do. And we're helping him, and he's helping uh, his state. That's what he has to do. Thank you. How is the operation going, though? And do you feel, my second question was, do you feel you're any closer to having Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela? I think the operation is doing really well. I think that uh, things are being discovered that you wouldn't have thought possible. Uh, the Abbott machine, Abbott Laboratory, is a great, great uh, scientific company. They came up with a machine that I would say two months ago nobody ever heard of this machine. And all of a sudden, boom, the people come into my office, they get tested, it takes them five minutes, and they feel very good. <laughs> Some of them have never been tested. But these are, you know, equipment and uh, equipment and, and tests that nobody ever thought even possible three or four months ago were being are being used commonly now. I looked at the numbers, and we're over 6 million tests. And you add up everybody together, they don't have anywhere near that. So it's, a, it's an incredible thing. And it would be great if the media could really portray it the way it is, because we've done some uh, unbelievable work. And when somebody uses the word successful, I mean, it really has been successful. It's been very successful. But if you look at mortality and mortality rates, uh, you know, this country, it's a very sad thing to be talking about. Whoever thought you'd be talking about such a thing two months ago was impossible. All we talked about was the economy, how well it was going. But today, we have to talk about that. Our country has really stepped up. Our generals have stepped up, and our admirals have stepped up. By the way, Admiral has done a fantastic job, as you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're very proud of everybody. This whole room has been very amazing. Okay, who's next? Mr. President, Mr. President. You, you have said that China is doing everything it can to make sure you don't get reelected. What specifically are they doing? Well, China doesn't want to see me elected, and uh, the reason is that uh, we're getting billions and billions of dollars, many billions of dollars a month from China. China never gave our country anything. China gave us nothing, not 10 cents. And whether it was uh, Biden in charge of China, which was a joke, because he ripped off — they ripped off our country for eight years. And uh, in all fairness to uh, Biden and Obama, this went on long before they got into office. I mean, you can go through many administrations until I came along. Uh, and then we signed a trade deal where they're supposed to buy — and they've been buying a lot, actually. But uh, that now becomes secondary to what took place with the virus. The virus situation is just uh, — not acceptable. Do you think that withholding information about the virus is related to them trying to undermine your reelection? No, I don't. I don't want to put any uh, cast any dispersions. I just will tell you that China would like to see uh, sleepy Joe Biden. They would take this country for a ride like you've never seen before. Biden. Biden. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, right. With the unemployment numbers coming out today, 30 million now unemployed. Have you given any thought to possibly extending the 600 extra dollars in unemployment benefits that are that are given out now? They will run out, and that will run out in yeah. July. Uh, they are looking at it, and they're taking a very strong look, and we'll be reporting to you very shortly. Uh, I will say this: uh, obviously, this is what it is. It's this period of time. But I think I view the third quarter as a transition quarter. And I think you're going to have a very strong transition. And then I think the fourth quarter is going to be incredibly successful. I think next year we're going to have a phenomenal year economically. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President. you keep referring to China, but do you call President Xi Jinping responsible for misinformation? Well, I don't want to say that. Uh, I don't want to say that. But certainly, uh, it could have been stopped. It came out of China. And it could have been stopped, and I wish they stopped it. And so does the whole world wish they stopped it, John. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President Say on, on unemployment, uh, there are many businesses who are concerned that as America opens back up again because of a provision in the CARES Act that right. gives an additional $600, they won't be able to get their employees back because they'll make more money staying at home than they would if they come right. back, came back to work, which has caused some governors to suggest that they might strip those people of their unemployment insurance if they refuse to go back to work. Is that something you would support? Well, we're looking at a lot of different things. I brought this up before it was done. This was a Democrat point, and I said, you know, some people are going to be treated unfairly, and some people will be 
treated, uh, you know, they didn't get into the kind of formulas the way I saw it. I said exactly that this was going to happen. But uh, when you think about it, it's basically we're being generous with people that it's short term and we're being very generous with people that lost their jobs or potentially would lose their jobs. So it's not the biggest problem uh, that I've ever heard of. They're getting a little bit more money. In some cases, they're getting more money than they thought they would have gotten. Uh, a lot of employees are saying, now the job is more important because the employer is not going to forget that. And But it was something that I brought up at the beginning, and nobody wanted to listen. Yeah, please. Follow up regarding uh, Joe Biden. Your campaign and surrogates going after him pretty hard with regard to these allegations from Tara Reid. What do you say no, to Joe Biden? I don't Biden? think so. I don't think they're going after him hard with regard to Tara Reid. Allegations, Reed. and what do you say to Joe I Biden? I don't know anything about it. I, I don't know uh, exactly. I think he should respond. You know, it's... Uh, it could be false accusations. I know all about false accusations. I've been falsely charged numerous times. Uh, and uh, there is such a thing. Uh, if, you look at, uh, if you look at Brett Kavanaugh, this is an outstanding man. He was falsely charged. What happened with him was an absolute disgrace to our country. And I guess three of the four women have now admitted that. And of the fourth, Give me a break. I mean, take a look. Uh, 36 years, uh, that is, uh, look, this is a fine man. I saw a man suffering so unfairly. I'm talking about Brett Kavanaugh. So, but I don't know. I can't speak for Biden. I can only say that I think he should respond. I think he should answer them. Another question on Biden, yeah, Mr. President. Ahead, Another question Thank on Biden. Thank you, sir. Uh, on China, a moment ago, you said that China, it's possible they could have chosen not to stop the spread of the virus. Are you insinuating they intentionally let it spread? Well, to they could have done it. And, and I'm just saying, well, one of two things happened. They, they either didn't do it and, you know, they couldn't do it from a competent standpoint or they let it spread. And, uh, I, you know, I, I would say probably it was got, it got out of control. But, you know, there's another case that how come they stopped all the planes and all of the traffic from going into China, but they didn't stop the planes and the traffic from coming into the United States and from coming into all over Europe. I mean, look at Italy. Look what happened to Italy. And it's very lucky. This country is very lucky, and I'm very lucky that I put the ban on China. As you know, very early on in January, we put the ban on in China, and that was a very early day. That wasn't a late day. That was an early day. Then we later put the ban on in Europe. And if we, uh, we didn't do that, as Alex knows, we would have had a problem like you wouldn't have believed. We would have had a, a problem much bigger. But then you take a look at what happened to Italy. A lot of those people went to Italy instead. And it's been a very, very tough place, Italy. Yeah. And then on holding, on the holding them accountable, is that something you prefer to do now in the next no, few weeks? No, I don't want to do that. I want to find out what happened. I think we'll be able to get a very good, uh, very powerful definition of exactly what happened. We're working on it strongly now. And I think it's going to be very powerful. Uh, but they could have stopped it. They are a very brilliant nation, scientifically and otherwise. It got loose, let's say, and they could have capped it. They could have stopped it, but they didn't. And But they stopped planes from going to China, but they didn't stop them from going to the rest of the world. What was that all about, Jim? Just to help us out on this, to follow up on Jordan's question, you praised China in the past. And what's changed when you tweeted, China's been working very hard to contain the coronavirus. The U.S. greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. Uh, yeah. it, it will all work out well. What has changed between then, when you were saying those things about China, and now? Well, what's changed is the following. We did a trade deal, and everybody was very happy. There's nobody ever been tough on China like I've been tough on China. I got elected, at least partially, because of borders and military and different things. But one of the things I'd say is how China and other countries are ripping us off. So recently, we signed a trade deal with China a number of months ago. China is buying billions of dollars worth of our product, our farm product and other product, manufacturing product. And it's been a great deal. But then we noticed a virus. And it's not acceptable what happened. It came out of China, and it's not acceptable what happened. And now what we're doing, Jim, is we're finding out how it came out. Different forms. You know, you've heard all different things. You've heard three or four different concepts as to how it came out. We should have the answer to that in the not-too-distant future, and that will 
determine a lot how I feel about China. But when I was, of course, I was very rough with China. I mean, Biden, as an example, the previous administration, they let China rip off this country like nobody's ever ripped off this country. Now, what I did is I took that, I took that, Coronavirus. Jim, I took that and I made it into a great deal for our country. But after that, all of a sudden, we heard there's a virus and a virus is coming in. That changes my mind very greatly. That's a whole different thing. So you can have good trade deals. That was earlier on, the trade deal. I made the trade deal earlier on. And it's a great deal. We're, we're taking in billions and billions of dollars of money in different forms, including the fact that we have a 25 percent tariff on $250 billion. It's a tremendous amount of money. Some of that money I've give, given to the farmers because they were targeted by China. And I gave $12 billion, I gave $16 billion, and this year we're going to be given, giving approximately $19 billion to the farmers. But, well, something happened, something happened. I don't say misleading or not, I'll let you know that. I mean, I'll be able to give you that answer at some point in the hopefully not too distant future. But I will tell you, you take a look at what happened to this world. A month and a half, two months ago, we had the strongest economy in the history of the world, and all of a sudden, I have to close the economy, I have to close the country. So we've had tremendous death and tremendous sorrow and sadness, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. And so have most of the countries of the world. Most, think of that, most of the countries. 184, you tell me, it's probably low right now, because I've been saying 184, 184 countries. Uh, they've suffered tremendously. Uh, it's uh, something that is going to have to be dealt with. Going to have to Mr. President, on the issue of loss, Vice President, on the issue of loss, Vice President Biden has said you should lower the White House flag to half mast. Are you going to do that? And are you thinking about leading the nation in a moment Nobody of warning? Said that. I mean, I would, I would not mind doing that. I would say not only the White House flag. We could, we could do that. In fact, it's something that uh, I will be talking about later on. We have a meeting on various things. That's one of the topics, and we're going to bring that up. So I think lowering the flags would be something very appropriate. Are you thinking about leading the country, though, in a moment of mourning for all of the lives lost, the more than 60,000 people? Of course I am. I don't think anybody can feel any worse than I do about all of the death and destruction that's so needless. Nobody. But I also have to make sure that we handle the situation well. Uh, nobody's thinking about it more. Nobody, uh, nobody has spent more time late in the evening thinking about what's happened to this country in a short period of time. But at the same time, we have to get our country open again. And we're doing that step by step. Tennessee is an example. Step by step, we're opening up our country, and I really believe that next year we can be, I, maybe even beyond. We have a lot of stimulus, and maybe even beyond. We'll see about, by the way, package four, phase four. But I really hope that we can be as good or better. I built it once, and so we're going to build it again. John, go ahead. President, you, you said a moment ago you will soon have information on where this virus originated. Uh, the Director of National Intelligence today put out a statement saying that they believe it was naturally occurring, it was not man-made, but... Who is that? Who is that that said that? The Office of the Director of National yeah, but Intelligence. Who, who in particular? Who was the man that made that statement? It was, it was a statement that the ODI... Oh, he would know that, uh, National Intelligence. So we'll see. I that mean, would be your Director of National Intelligence. Well, right I, now, no, I think, I think it's... I mean, you'd have to tell me who specifically, who made the statement. The statement was just put out under the office of okay, the ODI. We'll see. I mean, I have to see the statement. But, I just haven't but, seen it. But the question I had was, have you seen anything at this point? Because we're looking at that, John, separately from... Correct. But, we're looking at exactly where it came from, who it came from, how it happened, separately and also scientifically. So yeah. we're going to be able to find it. And my question is, have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I think that the World Health Organization should be ashamed of themselves because they're like the public relations agency for China. And this country pays them almost $500 million a year, and China pays them $38 million a year. And uh, whether it's a lot or more, it doesn't matter. It's still 
they shouldn't be making excuses when people make horrible mistakes, especially mistakes that are causing hundreds of thousands of people around the world to die. I think the World Health Organization should be ashamed of themselves. We'll be wrapping this up in a few minutes, guys. Uh, uh, we're going to keep it under half hour today. we got five more minutes. But sanctuary cities, especially at a time like this, that's a very dangerous thing. Uh, our law enforcement hates it. They hate it. They want — we want safe cities. We want sanctuary, but we want sanctuary for our citizens. And uh, we don't want sanctuary for criminals that came into our country illegally, and they have big records and records. I won't go into the type of crimes, but the crimes are the ultimate in evil in many cases. No, we don't want them to have sanctuary in our country. We want to have strong borders. Look, I say it again. We want to have strong borders. I've been saying this for a long time. And I think people are agreeing with me. I really do. I think people are agreeing with me. The Democrats want to have open borders where people just come in. And you're not only talking about coming in from a crime standpoint, you're now talking about coming in with not only the disease that we happen to be talking about so much lately, but other diseases. And they want to have open borders. They want people to pour into our country from, no, from who knows where they come. No, we're not doing that. We have a very strong border now, our southern border. And every day it gets stronger because we're building miles a day of very, very powerful wall. And that's a great thing for our country. That's so important for our country. And very few people are arguing with it. Yeah, please. Mr. President, you often, you often describe this fight against the virus as a war. How do you define victory? So it is a war, and I define victory when it's gone and we open successfully, we have a successful country again. Now, it can never be a total victory because too many people have died. All over the world, people have died. In our country, in every country. I'm looking at, at the new list of countries. Look at what's going on with Russia. Look at what's going on with Spain is so, so incredibly harmed and injured by this. So many people are dying. This is, this is not something where you'll go to your traditional, gee, this was an experience. This is not an experience. This is a very bad experience. But what I want is we want the virus gone, and we want to have a vibrant economy. We want people back. We don't want people necessarily sitting like these incredible people in front of me, where they're sitting six feet apart. Instead, I mean, the I want our country back. I want people to go a, a, you know, out and see football games and baseball games and basketball and hockey and golf and all of these sports and not worry about getting sick and violently ill. One of the things that was very interesting, you probably saw it, we put it out before, though, was uh, Sweden. And you compare the deaths in Sweden to Denmark and, and Finland and Norway. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but the deaths are very, very substantially higher in Sweden because they've used that as an example. Uh, Brazil is very high. If you look at what's gone on, the graph graphically very, very high, very, uh, very straight up almost. Right, Deborah? Very straight up. A friend of mine, great gentleman, uh, president of Brazil. He's really a friend of mine. He's a great man. But they're having a hard time. They're going herd. Sweden went herd. But you know, when they say herd, it's really in Sweden in particular, the bars you can't go to, certain areas you can't go to. Uh, a lot of the people are saying, well, the prime minister doesn't have to say, stay in your apartment, stay in your house. They're staying there. They're not leaving. So, you know, it's really uh, not quite what was reported, but the number of deaths are tremendous in Sweden compared to the countries that surround where they did, where they did very strong lockdowns. And we were discussing that, Deborah, before. It's a very big difference. It's a very big difference. But again, uh, Sweden didn't go really heard as you understand it. And also, the people of Sweden, very smart. They're staying in their houses. They're staying in — they're not going out and let's uh, — now, are some? Yeah, I guess, some. But they've lost a lot of people in Sweden. Yes, John? Can, Mr. President, can I just come back to the yeah, — I'll, I'll get you in a second. Can I get back to what we were talking about just a second ago? Sure. Um, I, I missed the — in the interruption. Did, did you — are you suggesting that maybe you have some evidence that this was not a naturally occurring virus? We're going to see what it is. You're talking about the virus and Correct. where it came from? Yeah, yeah. No, we're going to see where it is. We're going to see where it comes from. And, you know, look, you know every theory. You had the theory from the lab. You had the theory from 
many different, the bats and the type of bat, and the bat is 40 miles away, so it couldn't have been here and it couldn't have been there. And uh, we have, a, there's a lot of theories. But yeah, we have people looking at it very, very strongly. Scientific people, intelligence people, and others. And what gives and we're you? We're going to put it all together. I think we're going to have a very good answer eventually. And what gives and you? China a might, might even tell us. China may tell us. And and what gives you a high degree of confidence that this originated from the Wuhan Institute of Virology? I can't tell you that. I'm not allowed to tell you that. Mr. Uh, President. Jeff, go ahead. Mr. Mr. President, would you consider? having the United States not pay its debt obligations to China as punishment for the virus? Well, I can do it differently. I can do the same thing, but even for more money, just by putting on tariffs. So I don't have to do that. You know, uh, it's, a pro it's approximately a trillion dollars, a little bit more, as I understand it, a trillion dollars. But we can do that in a, uh, I think, probably a little bit of a more forthright manner. You start playing those games, and that's tough. You know, we have the dollar to protect. We want to protect the sanctity of the dollar, the importance of the dollar. It's the greatest currency in the history of the world. It's become stronger. We have a very strong dollar. That's why we're borrowing at zero, zero interest rate. You know, with all of the stimulus that we're talking about, we're uh, — that sounds good, though, General, doesn't it? We're paying zero interest, so essentially right around zero, but zero. Um, and you want to protect I — mean, it's a very good question. You know, you say, oh, gee, you owe us — we owe you a certain amount of money, we're going to keep it. But when you start playing that game, you're really hurting the sanctity, the importance of the greatest currency on Earth. But we can do it in other ways. We can do it with tariffs. We can do it other ways even beyond that, without having to play that game. That's a rough game. Speaker, on a separate topic but related, Speaker Pelosi said uh, that she envisions up to a trillion dollars needed to help support states and localities. Would you support that figure? So what's happening is the uh, Democrats have come to us and they'd like to do a phase four. And uh, we'll think about what's happening. They want to help the states. They want to help bailouts. And, you know, bailouts are very tough. Hey, uh, email me and let me know if you haven't got your, your stimulus check. I haven't got mine yet from the first time, so. <laughs> so let's mess up. I don't know. Is that luck or is that talent? Or is it just a different mentality? But the Republican-run states are in strong shape. Look, I, I looked uh, today uh, when I spoke. I spoke with Ron DeSantis, who was here yesterday, as I said. And Florida is doing incredibly. Texas is doing incredibly. These states are doing unbelievably. They don't know about the word bailout. Uh, we had a call from a governor of South Dakota, and they have one of the finest run states. They have a, I think, a constitutional amendment. They're not allowed to, you know, they have to have a, a balanced budget, and they have a balanced, totally balanced budget. They just have a sales tax. It's about the only tax they have is a sales tax. I mean, think of that. So it's a whole different thing. But uh, Republican states are doing very well. Uh, maybe the Democrats should have brought this up earlier when we wanted certain things. Uh, and they did. And we said, and I said specifically, no, let's look at it later on down the road. But they'd like to do something. Uh, they want to do infrastructure. I can understand infrastructure. Think of it. We've spent Eight trillion dollars in the Middle East, and we're not fixing our roads in this country? How stupid. How stupid is it? And we're not fixing our highways, our tunnels, our bridges, our hospitals even, our schools even? It's crazy. But, but they want to do things, and, and uh, the Republicans are in a much better position from — you know, I don't want to use the word negotiating position, but we really are. We're in a negotiating position that's different, because uh, they want to bail out various states. Illinois is in big trouble. The governor understands that. Pritzker, he understands that. But Illinois is in big trouble. Uh, is it fair to do that and then have states that are very powerful and strong, like Iowa and Idaho? Idaho. I mean, take Idaho. Look at look at all of these incredible states and look at what's going on and how successful they are. So. You just take a look, and, and we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. I think we want to take a little bit of a pause. But if we do that, we'll have to get something for it. Okay? 
So just Kristen, go ahead. a question on masks, but very quickly to follow up on Jeff. It sounds like you're potentially open to Leader McConnell's call that states should apply for bankruptcy. Is that what no, you're saying? I'm just, uh, it's an idea that he has. He threw that out as an idea. I've spoken to him about, about it very strongly. And uh, we're going to see what happens. We'll take a little bit of a pause. We'll see what happens. But some states are in trouble. I, I spoke today. I was with a wonderful man, a great gentleman, a wonderful human being. I think Bill knows him, too, from New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy. And we talked about it. You know, New Jersey is a, it's a wonderful state, I have to say. It's a wonderful place, but it's got a lot of difficulty in terms of uh, the economics and the, the debt, the costs, etc. So it's in a different position than uh, some of the other states that we could mention. We could mention them all day long. About masks, if I could. Uh, Vice President Pence did not wear one when he visited the Mayo Clinic earlier this week. He's wearing one today. You are traveling to Arizona. Will you wear a mask? What is the policy for well, you? I'm and the Vice to see. Uh, I am going to Arizona. I look forward to that. Uh, I'll have to see the climate. I mean, I'm going to look at see, you know, where I am. Here's a place that we all feel very comfortable. Everybody's spread out. It's a very big room. Uh, but as far as uh, where I'm going in Arizona, I'm going to have to look at the climate. I'd have no problem wearing a mask. I don't know. I'm supposed to make a speech. I just don't know. Should I speak in a mask? You're going to have to tell me if that's politically correct. I don't know. If it is, I'll speak in a mask. But but I have a. I, I'm going to be making a speech in Arizona. I look forward to it. Uh, and depending on the conditions, I would have no problem wearing a mask. We have millions of masks now. You know, we have masks coming in that. Uh, it was another thing. I mean, it was very hard to get masks. We now have, and we're making millions and millions of masks. They're opening plants, and it's been incredible. You your position because ahead, the chairman of the Federal Reserve has said that the hard economic to get masks, recovery yeah, no, is going to be long and slow. You have said that it's going to bounce back quickly. What do you know that he doesn't know? Well, I didn't hear what he said. I can only tell you that I see it. I think it's going to be a transition quarter, the third quarter. I think the fourth quarter is going to be very good, and I think next year is going to be fantastic because of the stimulus. And I haven't seen a statement, but I think we're going to have a, a great year next year. Uh, knowing that we left behind a year of uh, tremendous death, tremendous death, it was uh, just a terrible thing. The likes of which we haven't seen, I guess, if you go back over 100 years, 1917, and that was a terrible thing. But uh, that was close, to, depending on your your account or the account anywhere from 50 to 100 million people died, 1917. So we haven't seen it. It's over 100 years. And uh, so understanding that that was terrible, I think that uh, next year from, a, from an economic standpoint, I mean, look at the stock market. People are amazed. The stock market's at over 24,000. Well, it was at 29,000. It's 24,000 now. Is that even possible, considering what we've gone through? Because people are very smart. They're very — many of these people are very brilliant, and they look, and they, they see a great future. The other thing, the dollar is very strong. So when we go out and do stimulus packages, we're oversubscribed at zero. I mean, think of it. You get your money back at zero. It's a pretty incredible thing. Uh, the euro is having a hard time, and it's much smaller. The dollar has uh, really become — the dollar is king, and the dollar is uh, at a position now. It's just a very powerful — it's a very powerful thing, the dollar. Other currencies are very in big trouble. They're really in big trouble, whereas the dollar is very powerful, very strong. So the good part about that is if you do go out and if we do want to do stimulus or whatever we want to do, we're borrowing at zero, and the dollar is very strong. Okay, Jim. Yeah, Jim. Back to where John was asking about the possibility that this virus came out of a lab in China. Are are you insisting, or would you insist on China allowing U.S. investigators yeah. into that lab to make? Yeah, sure I don't. I don't want to go into that. Lab. We're going to see. So far, I think John has been uh, trying to be, or at least they seem to be trying to be, somewhat transparent with us. But we're going to find out. You'll be learning in the not-too-distant future. But it's a terrible thing that happened. Whether they made a mistake or whether it started off as a mistake and then they made another one, or did somebody do something on purpose, say, hey, you know, I, I don't understand how uh, traffic, how people weren't allowed into the rest of China, but they were allowed into the rest of the world. That's a bad — that's a hard question for them to answer. 
Yeah, please, go ahead. Mr. President, on Kim Jong-un, have you got an update on his condition and whether he is alive or dead? Well, I understand what's going on, and uh, I just can't talk about Kim Jong-un right now. I just hope everything is going to be fine. But I do, I do understand the situation very well, please. I heard either he's dead or he's really, really dead. When you talked about uh, being complimentary of China, were you saying that you were complimentary of China because you were concerned about the trade deal? Well, I'm making deal? a trade deal with China. This was before the virus. Of course they're going to be complimentary. Now, it was very uncomplimentary prior to that negotiation. And then every once in a while, the negotiation would break down because I'm not like uh, Kerry, who signed a worse deal. The yeah, Orlando, there is a rumor that, uh, And uh, we never left the table. I left the table a lot. Anyway, we ended up making a deal. And, of course, during the course of the deal, I was both complimentary and very uncomplimentary. But the bottom line is we ended up making a deal before the virus came. And I was very happy with the deal. But then later on, that was superseded by a virus that should not have happened. Well, I just want to thank you all very much, and we'll see you probably tomorrow sometime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We wrapping up, guys. Uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and end this feed. Thanks for watching. Thank Don't you. Thank you. Subscribe. Thank you. 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 Thank you